YouTube, uh, Ed here. Uh, I was goofing off one day and I was showing a buddy on uh, some things on how to build fishing rods. And he thought it'd be he thought it'd be a good idea if I did some YouTube videos on on how to uh, how to build a fishing rod. Now there's there's quite literally hundreds of videos out there on how to build fishing rods, and everybody seems to do it their own way. Some are some have similarities, some have differences, but I thought, you know what, I'll sh I know there's, a, I do some things uh, in ways that other people don't do them. I happen to think that some of my ways are perhaps a little easier. Not necessarily right, but just maybe for me, it's they're a little easier. So uh, I thought I'd go ahead and I'd, I'll go through and I'll, uh, I'll do a step by step on how to build a fishing rod. I'll do it in a multiple, and I'll do it in multiple episodes so it doesn't get so long. And, uh, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe people will like it, maybe people won't. Uh, a couple of disclaimers quick. Uh, I'm not here to advertise for anybody or uh, I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not endorsing anybody's product. I use the products I use because they work for me. Uh, not to say that they're better or any worse than anything else out there. It's just what I've used. I've had good luck with it. I've seen no point in changing. So that's what that's the stuff I use. So I will, I'll tell you the products I use, and I'll tell you the products that I don't use, and I'll tell you why I don't use them. Uh, another disclaimer: is my ways necessarily aren't the right ways, but they're they're what's work. It's what, excuse me, it's what works for me. So you try them, give it a shot. If you don't like it, it's nothing lost. It can never hurts to try. Uh, third thing: this is uh, this is my shop. You're in my shop uh, as a video guest in my shop, and you will likely throughout the course of these episodes be in my shop, and you will probably see things like, you know, fishing rods, and you're going to see some some firearms advertisements. You might see a gun on the wall. You might see a deer a deer antler on the wall. If that's the kind of thing that offends you or bothers you, I would suggest you probably leave now because I am not going to take down the stuff in my shop to not offend a few people out there that don't agree with my lifestyle. Uh, if that's something that doesn't bother you, please by all means stick around. Maybe I can teach you something. Maybe I can't. But uh, I'm not going to allow this to turn into some kind of forum bashing outdoorsmen and hunters and fishermen and the like. Uh, if you put comments on there to that effect, I will just I'll just delete them and then I'll block you, and that'll that'll be the end of it. So. Uh, this isn't this isn't going to turn into some anti-hunting, anti-fishing bashing forum. So, anyway, I will never touch that subject again. I don't like the negativity. I like to focus on the positive. So, this episode today, what we're going to do is we're going to go over uh, the basic equipment that you need to build a fishing rod. Uh, you just you need some specific stuff to do to do the job. If you make up your mind that this is something you want to try, you're going to have to buy some things. To get it done, uh, you can you can get away pretty cheap usually, but there are some things that you just simply must have to get the job done, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm to go over all that with you, and uh, we'll see what we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, shut the camera off. I'm going to reposition it, and we'll uh, go over the basics on equipment, and I will I will also go over some of the basics on on what you can do to build your first rod as easily as possible. All right, so stand by. All right, so let's go over some of the tools that you're going to need and some of the stuff you're going to need other than, like I said before, the obvious uh, the, of the fishing rod blank and the handle and the reel seat. Uh, let's, just, let's just go over the obvious. Uh, first and foremost, what you're going to need is uh, you need some masking tape. Uh, this is... This is quarter inch masking tape and this is half inch masking tape. Uh, you can get away with just the half inch, but I am here to tell you that that quarter inch is pretty handy. But uh, if you don't get both, get the half, the thick, the wider stuff. You'll, you'll need it. It's, it's indispensable. You'll need it to build up the arbor for the real seat and you'll need it to, uh, you'll need it to build the rod in general. So get some, get some masking tape. Uh, the quarter, I would recommend getting the quarter inch as well, but if you're only going to get one, get the half. You are going to need a tape measure. 
Uh, nothing fancy. A little cheap uh, two, three dollar tape measure from the bargain bin of a uh, department store would be just fine. Uh, eight, ten, twelve feet long. Uh, it helps to have a hook, but you can do it with a uh, with a seamstress's flexible tape measure as well. That is that is one option. Uh, this is a non-negotiable item. You have to have these razor blades. Uh, new ones. Get new sharp razor blades. Uh, four, three, four of them is enough to do a lot of rods. You uh, one razor blade will do a, will do your whole first rod build easily enough. Uh, these next items I'm going to go over are these are nice to have. So they aren't they aren't required by any means. Uh, they just make life a whole lot simpler. Uh, the first is a, is this yellow piece. It's called a burnishing tool. It's kind of rounded on this edge and it's flat on this edge. It's got some sharp edges here and a pick style tip. And what this is used for is this is used for packing the threads. Uh, use the pick to pick the threads over uh, to take care of any gaps. And then once you get everything wrapped with your threads you you take and run the burnishing tool over the threads and it kind of mushes them all down and and takes care of some more gaps. Not not a requirement, but certainly a nice to have. Uh, this this red handled pick here is just exactly that. It's a red handled pick. Uh, again, not required. Is is a nice to have. Uh, this is a one handed spring loaded scissors. Uh, again, nice to have. Uh, it's very functional. It works very well for cutting and for cutting threads and things, but not necessary. I, I believe this whole kit, uh, mail order through most rod supply houses, is right around seven dollars. And for seven dollars, I would certainly, I would certainly consider getting it. Uh, but you don't have to. You can make the rod build happen without those tools, and you can do that with these tools. Uh, the first one is your average everyday popsicle stick. You can buy them at a craft store. Uh, you probably, if you got kids that eat popsicles, save the sticks. You can do almost everything you need to do with a popsicle stick. You can also get dental picks from your local dentist. Uh, these things break, they can't sharpen them anymore, or they get ready to throw them away. Uh, next time you're in there getting your teeth cleaned, ask your hygienist for some dental picks. They'll give them to you free of charge, uh, nine times out of ten, because they're just going to chuck them anyway. Ask them for some, they'll give them to you by the handful, and they'll be clean. They have to sterilize them, so they'll be nice and clean. And those two things, the, you need you need some kind of tool to pack threads. So you absolutely need to have at least a popsicle stick, or get yourself a burnishing tool and a pick but any of those these two tools or any of these three tools these are like I said these are the nice to haves you gotta have a popsicle stick or something to to pack the threads with you need you need some kind of tool to help with the thread work paint brushes two inexpensive paint brushes now these paint brushes say right on them rod builders brush uh, in fact these are cheap uh, craft store watercolor brushes that's all they are these aren't these aren't any special kind of brush made specifically for rod builders go to Walmart in the art section and find the watercolors and you'll find these cheap brushes a couple different sizes the blue one here the purple one is uh, what they call a eighth inch brush and then this yellow one is what they call a quarter inch brush it's nothing fancy. All you're going to do is you're going to use them and you're going to throw them away. So get the cheapest brush you possibly can. I buy these from my rod supplier because I have a wholesale account and I get them pretty cheap. I buy them in bulk. I buy them by the hundred. So you need, but you need a couple. You need at least one. At a minimum, get get an eighth inch wide brush. Uh, another thing you're going to need, other than the rod kit itself, is you're going to need to buy thread. Uh, whatever colors you like. Uh, for your first build, you really can't go wrong with uh, with black and silver, or you know, really any color you want. It doesn't matter. My first build, I used black and silver. 
uh, this is this is at one point in which I will promote a product and I will promote Pro Wrap and I promote Pro Wrap because of this color fast option that they have in their threads a lot of thread manufacturers don't have color fast in their threads uh, I, I believe there's a couple others but Pro Wraps works really good what color fast is is if you're using another color other than black say you're using a, a yellow or a red or an orange or a blue if it's not color fast if it doesn't have the color fast option when you put the epoxy on to seal the threads it'll change the color of the thread so you need to have the color fast option so that the thread colors don't change when you put the finish epoxy on metallics don't don't it doesn't matter you, you, there's no color fast option for metallics but for regular nylon uh, fishing rod wrapping thread I would highly recommend getting pro wrap in the color with the color fast just so you don't have to worry about the color change uh, in the in the when you apply the epoxy if you don't get thread with a color fast option you need to get a color preserver this is made by a company called flex coat and what this does is this effectively seals the fibers in the thread so when you apply the finish epoxy it doesn't change the color the thing I don't like about this is it not only stops the color from darkening it up it also stops the epoxy from penetrating all the way through to the rod blank uh, this is a, this is effectively a thin weak glue and it seals the fibers up so well that sometimes the th uh, the epoxy won't soak through the thread and adhere well enough to the rod the blank itself so I don't like using I don't like using color preserver uh, unless it's only for decorative wraps if it's for wrapping around the uh, guides and things like that I really don't like using color preserver well if you if you do and don't use it, you either have to use it on the whole rod or you don't want to use it at all. So save yourself the time and the hassle. Get the color fast option. When you get a little more advanced and you start doing some other stuff, you can, you can look at getting color preserver and standard thread. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need, of course, is the, the finish epoxy itself. Uh, the finish the finishing product uh, again this is by a company called pro coat happens to be the same company that makes pro wrap that's why the letters look the same uh, as a result of that they I, I buy this from the same from the same wholesaler pro coat is uh it's worked really good for me it's the only kind i've ever used i've never tried flex coats i've never tried rod bond uh, flex coat's been working for me i see no reason to change uh, it's a it's a simple thing to do. It's a two part mix. You uh, you mix it 50 50 in a little a little measure in a little cup like this right here. And when you buy the when you buy the epoxy, you will also get two syringes, one yellow, one blue. You mix it 50 50 by volume, and I never mix less than two cc's of each. Uh, you can see here it's got little graduations on it. I hope that focus is okay. This isn't the best camera in the world. But right about there is two cc's. I never mix less than a total of four cc's of product. That's two of the hardener, two of the resin. Uh, just because it seems to make the mixing go a little little better. So you'll need rod finish or uh, thread finish. And I like Pro Coat. Uh, you can buy this in a very minimal amount uh, enough to basically do one rod or you can buy them in bottles of various sizes uh, these bottles are not the ones I buy I usually buy it by the uh, by the quart and just keep refilling these bottles but you need you need rod finish uh, whatever kind you decide to go with they're all the same they all take a 50 50 mix but be sure to read the directions you will also need uh, two part epoxy this again is made by by the same people that make Pro Coat. This is Pro Paste. This is for gluing on the real seats and various other functions, uh, gluing on the handles, things of that effect. Uh, again, with this product, it's a uh, it's a 50/50 mix. 
You mix it up on a piece of, piece of scrap cardboard. Uh, you, can, you can use a popsicle stick to mix it up. You just scoop, some, scoop out equal parts. This isn't as critical as the finish is. Uh, the finish is more critical. The finish you really need to get that 50-50 that mixture pretty, pretty close or right on. This isn't nearly as critical. You, you want to be close. I usually mix up about a, about a quarter size amount on a piece of cardboard. You stir it up really good and you mix it. Just follow the instructions. This is a fast set. They claim uh, sets up in 15 minutes. Uh, that, that can vary. Uh, it varies on temperature, humidity, uh, the things that normally affect glue and, and finishes and, and things like that. If you do any kind of painting or woodworking, you know that if it's humid out, it takes a little longer to have the paint set up. Again, this is, this is made by the same company as the, makes the Pro Coat and the Pro Wrap. Uh, and I buy it all from the same, from the same source. Uh, another thing you're going to want is uh, denatured alcohol. Uh, I buy this at Walmart. Uh, regular, regular rubbing alcohol, which you can buy in a store, it will work. It just requires more of it. Uh, it's all, all you're using the denatured alcohol for is cleanup. Uh, I do use, I also use denatured alcohol for thinning my, my finish coat my finish coating. Uh, this Pro Coat finish is uh, it's, it's a medium viscosity, it's relatively thick. Uh, oftentimes the first coat I like to thin it and I'll use denatured alcohol to do that. Uh, I do that for a couple of reasons. One, it evaporates quickly. Once you apply the finish it evaporates off and, and it, it, it works really well. Uh, two, it it doesn't seem to uh, have any effect on paints or any kind of colorings that you might use. You can also use the, use acetone to thin the epoxy uh, finish, but I find that acetone, if you do any kind of painting on your rods or if you use any kind of pigments, uh, oftentimes acetone will react adversely to uh, to pigmentation. So I like to use denatured alcohol. It's it's uh, relatively foolproof and doesn't smell too bad and it's it's usable uh, the other thing you're gonna need and this is unfortunately the probably the most expensive thing that you will need are these reamers uh, you can make reamers but I wouldn't recommend it I've tried it and it just it never seems to work all right so I buy these reamers uh, unfortunately they're rather expensive they're you can buy them individually most of your rod builders will get away with these two reamers but if you start getting into uh, so you're gonna build a bass rod uh, which is a heavy action type rod uh, so you're you're pulling frogs in the lily pads or something and you want to you want a heavy action seven foot flipping rod with a fast tip. That's that's a pretty healthy rod when you get down to the down to the butt section. It's pretty big in diameter, and you're going to need this bigger one to finish it off, finish off your cork handles or your your EVA handles or whatever. So, like I said, this is this is unfortunately is probably the most expensive part, but it's also something that you simply cannot do a rod build without. Uh, you need to be able to ream out the cork handles to uh, to make them fit. If you do EVA handles they say you don't have to ream those but I do anyway just to make it go easier because I am here to tell you if you're doing EVA handles and you don't have them and, and you don't get them slid onto the onto the blank fast enough they'll hang up on you and they they can make a big old mess if especially the first time you do it and you're gonna you're gonna appreciate reaming them out with these and these will ream cork and they will ream EVA both. I think when I do this when I do this rod build I am going to do it with cork and not not EVA foam. Uh, other than that you also will need a rod uh, rod wrapper. 
couldn't think of that there so I'm going to pick the camera up here you need you need a device to hold the rod while you're working on it we, uh, we make some camera adjustments here this rod wrapper here which you can see on my bench I had made uh, my father-in-law made this for me I'm not much of a woodworker but my father-in-law is a, a fantastic woodworker and so he has, he has made me a few of my tools for rod building one of which is this rod wrapper what this does is this device it, it holds the fishing rod captive so you can put the guides on you can here's a cradle that holds all your threads and you'll see all this when we actually build the rod you don't have to get this extravagant with your rod wrapper I had this one made this one's uh, seven feet long and it's capable of doing rods up to eight feet and uh, you don't need one this extravagant and I will I will post some some pictures throughout this video or at the end of this video probably on some good beginner rod wrappers you don't need anything this extravagant but a rod wrapper's sole purpose in life is to hold the fishing rod so you can install the guides you can install the, the decorative wrapping you can basically it holds the rod for you one other thing that you're going to need and this again unfortunately is not something you can skimp on or even do without and there's really not a cheap or expensive version it just it is what it is and that is a rod dryer now this is this is my rod dryer here uh, there's actually I have three of them here what the purpose of the rod dryer is is when you put the epoxy on for finishing your your fishing rod let me get some of this out of the way here you need to you need to have a have it on a rotation uh, the the two-part epoxy that you're going to use for finish is a it's a self-leveling epoxy that will that requires a slow rotation you can see here how slow that rotates it's about uh, I believe that's about a 9 rpm rotation and what that does is it slowly rotates the rod so that uh, the epoxy doesn't drip off and sag off so you basically just shove the butt of the rod in there turn on the switch and it rotates the rod around and that way when you apply your finishes the finishes don't drip off they just keep keep leveling themselves because of the constant rotation and you got to do the you got to rotate these things for about 12 hours so the finish dries again unfortunately this is non-negotiable however you can you could shop around to find a good deal uh, this particular rod dryer that I'm showing you right here is about $35 uh, you can go on eBay you can find a couple of guys that are making them homemade for a little less uh, so there are options out there but this this one works it works very very well if it turns out you don't like rod building you can always stick it back on eBay and you can probably sell it for almost what you paid for it because they just don't really seem to lose their value so anyway you need you also need a rod dryer and that's other than the rod blank and the guides and the handle and the reel seat these are this is the basic equipment that you need so you've got uh, we've gone through all the gear and all the equipment that you need now you actually need the parts to build the rod uh, you're gonna need a blank a rod blank you're gonna need a real seat you're going to need uh, handle and grips uh, you're going to need guides and a tip top now you can go out on the internet and you can order all these things individually or you can go to uh, there's one website out here and this will be the only time I really intentionally promote uh, one single business uh, you can go to www.mudhole.com and under their rod building section you can order a kit. That kit will have everything in it that you need to build the rod with the exception of the adhesives and the thread. And of course the, the equipment that we've discussed here today. Uh, it'll take all the guesswork out of 
out of the parts. You can get a spinning kit, you can get a casting kit, and you can get them really, really inexpensively. Like I, I believe one kit is like as low as thirty dollars, if I remember right, thirty or forty. Uh, this just off the top of my head, give or take a few. Or you can get some fairly expensive ones if you want to do a higher end rod. I'd suggest getting a, a relatively inexpensive one. Uh, trying it out, make your mistakes on that one. That way if you screw something up, it's no big deal. Nothing's lost. And then uh, then try something more expensive later. Uh, my, first, my first six rods were all rod kits. Uh, I ordered six kits. I, ordered, I built six rods. I gave a couple away. I still have a couple. I still use them. Uh, so I, that, that's what I did is I just ordered kits for the first few and I got used to doing it and then once I figured out what I was doing and I could understand the terminology then I'd go through and I'd pick and choose my parts individually. So uh, other than that uh, I'll, uh, I'll post that website and uh, pick yourself up a kit. I, I am not going to do a kit but everything I'm going to do in the next few episodes you will be able to do with the kit. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to take a take a few of the rods that I've made. I'll take some pictures, and I'll post those on the back side of this video as well, so you can just see some of the stuff that you can do. Search around on the internet uh, for custom rods. You can see some pictures of some crazy stuff that some of these guys are doing. Some beautiful work. Uh, a lot of a lot of it borders art, uh, if not art. It's it's unbelievable some of the things that they're doing. And ultimately, that's that's what you're looking to do. You're not going to, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to save any money building your own fishing rods. You're just not. That's not the point. Uh, the point of building your own fishing rod, and you'll, you'll see this and you'll understand this as the episodes go, is to uh, build it correctly, which is something that you oftentimes cannot get on an off-the-shelf rod, and to build it the way you want it to fit your needs with the colors that you want and, and just do it totally your way and it's it's something you did and there's something satisfying to me catching fish on a rod that I built so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go take I'm gonna change the camera I'm gonna grab a couple of the rods that I've built uh, talk about them a little bit and just just show you what I've done and then uh, and then I'll post those uh, pictures and videos or pictures and uh, web addresses and stuff that I promised you at the end of the end of the movie. And then the next time I see you, we will be gluing up the handle and preparing a handle for for being glued up. And that's that's the first step. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope to see you again. And uh, if you if you like what you see, click like. If you don't like what you see, click don't like and subscribe. Uh, to see more coming. I'm not only going to do fishing rods, I'm going to do some other videos. It's kind of fun so far, so let's, uh, let's see how it goes. And thank you and have a good evening. Alright, here's, here's just a few of the fishing rods that I've made. Um, just just kind of give you an example of some of the stuff you can do. And I'm going to hope this focuses because this camera is kind of crappy. But uh, so this first one you can see is a it's a theme rod. It's a Texas A&M uh, fishing rod I made for a, for a client. Uh, it runs the Texas A&M colors. I can uh, I can monogram it. There's my there's my company logo for for my company. But I can I can pretty much do whatever I want with you can do you can do whatever you want with these. This is a bait caster. I put a uh, I put a split uh, split reel seat on here and you can see here there I got some focus back you can see here I just did some detail work on the trim there's a spiral there and uh, this one's been sitting on the rack for a little while so it's a little dusty but uh, there's some trim bands there there's the rod information you may be wondering why it's dusty this rod was a uh, was actually uh, I shipped it to the customer and the post office managed to break it before the customer got so when I got the box back I just kept these kept these as uh, kind of examples as to some of the stuff that I can do uh, minus the broken portion but the next one up here is uh, for yet another customer it's just black uh, your basic classic black and silver again it's an EVA grip 
Um, nothing fancy, just a no-nonsense rod. Uh, there's a little bit of trim work there that's, that's kind of fun. Nothing too crazy. Uh, that's the guy's name. He wanted a monogram. Uh, this customer is coming to pick this up in a couple days. These next two rods up top, these white ones, these are my own personal rods which I fish with. Uh, they're again split reel seats, uh, Fuji SK2 reel seats with cork, cork grips. Uh, one's a spinner and one is a bait caster. And I built these two rods just because I wanted to. I wanted two matching rods and that's what I got. I got two rods that match. And I'm actually thinking I'm probably going to outfit my whole boat with uh, matching rods. Something you can do when you build your own. You can do fun stuff like that. Uh, this next rod up here I built, built one day just because I was bored. And the fun thing about this rod was is this is all parts I had laying around. Uh, nothing too fancy. It's just a, this was actually a rod kit. Uh, other than the blue reel seat I had laying around. But what I did with this one, this was something I tried differently, is I put a little glitter in the uh, finish epoxy just to make it, just to make the rod stand out a little differently. And then I also, right here where I wrapped the guides, I put a little glitter in the guide epoxy and then the guides are blue. So when I used a couple different shades of blue and uh, you can see this kind of, I've got a blue theme going. But that's, that's something I just tried. I tried putting a little glitter in the epoxy and it came out pretty neat. This rod here uh, I built showing another guy how to build fishing rods. Again, just parts I had laying around the shop so I threw it together one day. This is a, this is a Baston blank, a uh, Baston forecast blank. It's actually a very nice blank. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a crappie rod for me. It's pretty light, 16th to quarter ounce uh, lure weight. Again, I threw my company logo on there. This is just a no-nonsense rod, uh, spin cast rod. Threw some trim bands on there. This one's actually a two-piece. So you can see here is the uh, here is the joint, the ferrule point. And here was one of the neat things about building your own rod is you can actually put the guide on the ferrule point, so uh, you can add some strength there. Something you oftentimes won't get with a store-bought two-piece rod. This rod right here, uh, I built as a present for a family member. Uh, the reason I have it right now is because he managed to slam the tip of it in the car door and I had to fix it, which wasn't a big deal. But you can see this one, this one's got some neat, uh, some pretty neat thread work done on it. This is what's called a, uh, a chevron. Actually, this one's a double reverse chevron. So I got one chevron pointing back and then the other chevron pointing forward which is underlaid the one pointing back. It's kind of a complex weave uh, to look at but it's actually quite simple to do uh, once you've done it a couple times. It takes some practice but and then I, uh, I've got a gold reel seat which kinda is in keeping with the whole gold theme and then I've got gold guides uh, with gold under wrap and black black hold down wrap, and it's uh, gold and black guides all the way up to the all the way up to the end. This is a slightly slightly heavier action rod that uh, the guy uses for uh, for some larger fish. And then this rod here, here's a here's another example of what you can do if you know how to build a rod. This was an old fishing rod that I had bought about 10 years ago. I, th I believe it was a uh, an old Fenwick blank that I had purchased at Walmart and I fished with it for many many years and I stripped it and rebuilt it basically. Uh, the epoxy was all getting bad on it and what I did was I, I turned my own corks, uh, I put some swirl patterns in the uh, in the epoxy finish. This is what's called marbling and here I put in a two-piece reel seat and I marbled in between the two pieces of reel seat which was kind of tricky but I was able to get it done. Uh, that's something I can show on a later video and I'm going to show how to how to do these these Pacific Bay two-piece reel seats uh, when I when I do the build on this rod because I believe this is probably one of the best if not the best reel seat on the market. 
and then I put in a real small four cork did some more marbling up here on the on the rod itself and there's my logo and the fun thing about this is is I used what's called a holographic guide it's gold and blue holographics and that that in and of itself isn't all that kind of crazy except for the fact that I've got a quantum reel that has the same kind of holographic color pattern on it and it all kind of matched up so these are some of the things you can do when you when you're a broad builder you can you can build matching rods you can build them any color you want you can build them any way you want to this is your rod you do with it as you please and this is just some of them that I have laying around my shop I got a I got a whole boat full of them that I that I have as well and it's just you know, it's just good fun it's a good way to to keep busy and uh, they, they make good gifts they uh, they make great equipment to fish with yourself and uh, they're infinitely better than anything you can buy in the store so uh, I had an old guy one time tell me anybody who builds their own custom rod is building a better rod than what they can buy in the store so and I, I firmly believe that as well anyway that's the uh, that's the extent of the the video I'll post some uh, some pictures of the I'll post some pictures of the rod wrappers up and I'll uh, send, a, send a website out there with, uh, with rod kits for you to get started on your first build and uh, next time I see you we'll be gluing up handles and we'll be taking the next step. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, remember to click if you like, subscribe if you want, uh, click if you don't like. Let me know how I'm doing. Thanks.